man. Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. President Van Portley. Here. President Pro Tem Narsh. Here. Council Member Hobbs. Here. Council Member Lamb. Here. Council Member Luxinger. Here. He's here. Council Member Matheson. Here. Council Member Rush. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. I'm going to be standing the whole time. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I was rough to sleep. Glad you could make it. Thank you. She wanted us to wear a mask. Do you want us to wear a mask? If you are willing to, I would appreciate it. Joe, do you? Yeah. I'll take Batman. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Took Dan's card. Didn't have one of the box. We'll just kind of give it a little bit of a moment here. Item four of our agenda this evening is presentations. And we're going to receive a presentation from Mr. Jason Peltier on the Paint Creek Trailway Commission update. And So, our presentation, Paint Creek Trailway Commission update. We have a business owner, Mr. Jason Peltier, that represents the village on that commission. Sir, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Jason Peltier here, oat soda curator of the craft and uh, uh, representative of the village for the commission, Paint Creek Trailways. Um, I want to begin uh, thanking you for um, asking me to participate in that fashion. Um, it, as you know, it is a passion of mine, trails, bike riding, and of course with being Otsota's proximity to the trail, it's a natural fit for me to do more for the trail and to represent the village on the Trailways Commission. Albeit it is a non-voting position, I get to sit there and listen a lot. I've learned a lot. Um, first few meetings were... Uh, Virtual, that was fun. A couple times I got kicked off and I was like, okay, I'm done. Um, but uh, it, it's been a nice learning, met some really cool people. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's been a fun year, a lot. Amazingly enough, uh, half the year virtual, a lot has still gotten done um, with the trail in your packet today. Um, there was the same um, uh, information that was sent out to all the uh, councils and commissions. Um, represented, the communities represented. Um, uh, of note, of course, you know, the Detroit Institute of Art, hopefully everyone got to see that this year. Mutri Pollinator Garden, um, a free library, uh, free memorial little library, bike rack were also installed there. Um, one of the biggest projects of the year is the Pink Creek, uh, Pink Creek Trail signage project 
So there's wayfinding signage throughout the whole entire trail, which is absolutely wonderful because um, wayfinding is good. You need to know where you're going. Uh, some fix-it stations were added to the trail this year as well. And updated the memorial bench policy, which will uh, allow some people to, uh, um, uh, a little easier to uh, get some memorial benches on the trail, which actually helps everyone use of the trail. Do, 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 do. Of course, bridge work, sprit rail fence fixing, um, finding contractors, which we were having a conversation earlier, is a difficult process. So, But uh, nonetheless, a lot of things were done on the trail. I am here also to ask you, are there things you would like me to, as a representative to the Trailways Commission, to move forward and ask and um, initiate or advocate for, albeit my next point in my presentation is probably the biggest thing I can do for the village, but uh, we'll get to that in a minute. For me, the next thing in the presentation, which is the tour, the trail, is what I was hoping that you could bring to the table, which you are for us, which is uh, bringing people into the village via the trail. Unfortunately, we did not end up as part of the iron belt system. We weren't recognized as a spur, so we're kind of on our own, and anything that can be done uh, as a representative there for us and a business owner is greatly appreciated. So that's exciting. Awesome. Yeah, um, I'll get right to Tour to Trail. Um, you have a couple little, I abbreviated some of the information that we've talked about. We've had several think tank meetings, uh, one of them this uh, morning. Um, I can send those out if anyone would like to participate. I know uh, Teresa has um, offered uh, interest in uh, participating in think tanks for Tour to Trail. A brief on Tour de Trail, uh, it's going to coordinate with uh, Pink Creek or National Trail Days, which is June 4th, held June 4th every year. They do a little event in uh, Children's Park, uh, Children's Park in the parking lot. It's been several different things over the years. We are looking to get aggressive and big this year coming. Um, we're estimating 400 participants looking to do um, close off the area similar to uh, what the DDA did for the Oktoberfest, but not as big a tent, smaller tents, but that same footprint. Uh, raising money for the trail, bringing people into the community. Um, uh, beer tent, so to speak. Uh, Family-friendly activity as well. Um, there'll be activities for the kids, slalom courses. Uh, it's not just a biking event. It'll be uh, biking, walking, running, whatever you want to do, get people up and down the trail. It'll start in the morning and run until about four o'clock in the afternoon is our uh, target time to get people out of the parking lot, get it cleaned up, and then we have the parking available for uh, the evening. Uh, uh, food trucks. Um, the big thing is we want to pr uh, provide education, trail, safety, etiquette, um, also showcase uh, businesses that are along the trail. You know, it's, it's not just a way to get some exercise. It can also transport you from community to community. Um, a day of event, we're not really going to push for people to explore the businesses around the trail but part of the packet for the uh, event will be, we're looking to do some like a passport, um, which will include businesses in Rochester, Oakland Township, and the village of Lake Orion, anyone around that trail, and encourage people throughout the month of June to visit, get their passport stamped, learn about these businesses, and then turn their passport in end of the month, and then there'll be a drawing from there. So that's a way we get people to not just a one day use, one day get out, but explore throughout the whole month. And hopefully that will um, kind of create a pattern of usage and uh, visiting the businesses around. Uh, any questions regarding Tour de Trail? We'll be submitting, yes, the application very soon for 
What's the intended date? It's June 4th. It'll coordinate with National Trail Day, of which an event that already happened. So it'll just be National Trail Day, what the, the Trailways Commission puts on, will be a part of this larger event. The larger event will be put on by the Friends of the Pink Creek Trail. Great. Great, great idea. Yeah. It, it's very similar to what I did when I was um, uh, general manager at Clubhouse BFD in Rochester Hills. Um, we did two biking events. It was slowly biking. Um, and we started out maybe getting a couple hundred people and that grew to over 500 at one point, riding up and down the trail. You know, we're the only uh, lake-based community on trail system in this area that I'm aware of. And I, I continue to suggest to our DDA, and maybe this might be something you could help with as well, is the possibility of a triathlon. We've got a great bike shop here in the community. Uh, a nice run, swim, bike uh, event might be a good signature event to take off on. I do like that idea. Obviously, there's a lot of logistics of that, but I definitely think that's something we can yeah. pursue. Yeah. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. And Jay, I've got a question. I know we had discussed this. We actually had some initial planning several years ago. I think it was around 2017 or eh, maybe a little before that. But has there been any additional discussion about connecting the Pink Creek Trail via M24 North to the Pollyann Trail? Um, bringing in Oxford Village. Not to my knowledge right now, other than the Clarkston connector, and that's, a, of course, the Clarkston Road connector over to the Pollyann, but that's a, not a very conducive ride for, to get from Orion to Yeah. And the to idea Oxford. was to connect the business districts mm -hmm. of the village of Lake Orion uh, to the Oxford Bill. I think um, the village of Oxford uh, would have um, as much uh, activity as a result of that connection as the village of Lake Orion. I know there are a couple of sticking points, but they were talking about using the west side of M24, and it may be a, an easier option. But anyway, um, it would be cool in the future if we were able to maybe just take a look at that again. Um, it, it would bring, I think, a lot more bike traffic between the two communities. Um, and you can always have another spur, especially with the density we have between the two. You got that noted down. I will uh, I bring that up at the next meeting and uh, see what uh, kind of uh, communication we get on that and see what we could do. I thought of many of times how many time, how to, to ride up to Oxford and back and it's... There was one sticking point as you got to the bridge by the golf course going north. Mm -hmm. and that was on the east side. And then there were some discussions on the railway right away on the west side, the old railway right away. And that actually seemed kind of feasible, but um, I, I just, man, having our trail end right at Kroger. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, if we could continue north and everybody on the north end, I think you'd have a lot more bicycle traffic coming south into the village and uh, and vice versa, so Oxford would benefit as well. That's a, it's a connectivity and what we all saw um, in light of recent um, Tragic events is the coming together of our community. We are two, we are two communities, but we are very much one. Yeah. And um, to connect us that way would definitely be a a uh, plus. It's, yeah, it's a two and a half, maybe three mile stretch. And really, the idea here is connecting density to density, mm -hmm. and uh, it just seems to make economic sense. Um, so we'll see. Okay. Yeah. I think that it, it, this is all great. I, I've used the trail when I was trained for my marathons and all of that. But with um, the increase of people using the trails, um, there, there probably should be an increase in bathrooms along the trail. I know there is one that was just installed, but I oh, okay. I, I did not know that. I'm just I will I will look into the total number and see where we're at. Because I know there's one right at Clarkston, and then it's it's been a while since I've run. The I think the new one's just a Okay. I think it was. 
Because I'm, I'm, I'm doing a shout out for the runners who, because we, we don't make it as far as. We're not going as far. Yeah, we're, we're not going to make it as far. Thank you for representing and, and the thank runners. Thank you for doing this. This is, um, mm -hmm. this is, looks great. It's all of the accomplishments and everything that you've listed. And I know there are some that are smaller that you probably haven't put on here. Um, it's all yeah, the, the, the commission, like I say, it's, it's, it's been a learning experience for me with, uh, you know, us, uh, my position as a non-voting representative, I don't get to have as much fun as the rest of the commission, but I guess I get to sit back and listen. I put my two cents in, and, um, but it's a great group of people and they have, you know, uh, all good intentions and they're well managing the funds and uh, there's a lot of discussion that's had and um, I do enjoy it. So um, also of note too, I forgot to mention, um, Hanson's and Main Street Bikes, of course, are both 100% uh, dedicated to this event as well and will be represented. So. That's great. And Wayne Haney was here today, so. I just have he a quick looked. question for you, unrelated to the event, but related to the trail. Um, I'm curious with the number of electric bikes that I've seen now going, has that increased wear and tear on the trail? Has the commission thought about like how to manage, especially with higher speeds of some of them? It's, uh, the e-bikes come up in every single meeting. Okay. And um, at some point we could possibly see e-bike total no, you know, it depends on even the different um, types. Um, Nothing has been said as far as more, but I'm sure there is. Yes. I might have suggested we continue that dialogue. The only way we can be able to restrict the limit that would be send some motion that would regulate the horsepower size of the There there already is right now, so there's different categories that are there's only one category that's allowed on the trail, the others are not. And there is Oakland uh, County Sheriff patrolling as well. But they haven't they haven't written anyone tickets anyone any tickets for uh, that as of yet. Well, Mr. Pelletier, we thank you. Uh, job well done. I, and please come talk more often. Come communicate with us. Okay. I know any one of us will stop in and see you at your. Business please do. Soda. I'm there all the time in Otsota, so yeah. yeah can... I catch up down there when I can. But anyways, uh, we appreciate it and. Uh, Thanks for bringing a message back to the board. It's my pleasure. I do have a quick question. I guess I signed up for this, uh, not asking, and I know some of the uh, communities, it is a term, so I just applied and I'm here. How long you want me here? Is it? Uh, 2035. So 2035, is that okay with you? 2035, okay. I am open for as long as, obviously I am effective and can do it as long as I'm available. So. I think that's what we'd like to see as All right. well. All right. All right, sounds good. Well, thank you very thank much. You, Again, any other questions, feel free to reach out anytime. Um, I will send out a blip every time we have little think tank meetings. If anyone would like to join, feel free. You right. can learn yeah. what, what we're yeah. doing. Or if there is a reason why we should try to or should show up at one okay. of those meetings and attend, that's okay. helpful. For I, I know at some point we'll be reaching we'll out to see you know, how the village and the DDA, I'll be uh, uh, presenting to the DDA board tomorrow as well. And you know, this is a big thing to get our community as much into this as possible because this is a huge event that can bring a lot of people in. So. Thank awesome. You, Thank you very much. Yep. Item five, call to the public on non-agenda item. We'll open the call to public and if there's no response, we'll close the call to the public. Item six, consent agenda. Yes, sir, Mr. Lamp. For discussion? Yeah. Okay. So that makes we have a consented agenda item for seven items this, this evening. Number one would be special event permit live ice sculpting 2022. Number two, police department reports November and December. Number three, approval of those council regular meeting minutes from December 13th. Item four, planning commission draft regular meeting minutes from December 6th. Item five, Downtown Development Authority regular meeting minutes November 9th. Item six, Board of Zoning Appeals special draft meeting minutes October 28th. 
to item 7, Board of Zoning Appeals, draft meeting minutes from December 16th. Are there any other items that anybody wishes to remove to address? Okay, so that's where it stands. We'll seven right now as the consent agenda. And we'll look to immediately follow up with eight, nine, and 10. I entertain a motion. I think you made the motion. Or you just wanted to remove, I'm sorry. I'll move, uh, make a motion to approve the consent agenda items one through seven with the removal of eight, nine, and 10 to be talked, discussed immediately after. Support. All those in favor, please in the cap. Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Number eight, Mr. Lamb. Use your mic. I just wanted to reiterate that these DDA reports, to me, don't look like reports. They're more like color advertising or comic books. I have great difficulty garnering any information from them whatsoever. And considering the amount of money that the DDA spends on staffing, and I think a, this could all be condensed to a one-page black and white report. Is that it, sir? That's it. Um, and I would like to add, we did discuss getting a more substantial report, not necessarily just a page of pictures in past meetings. So um, I would like that to be brought up at the next DDA meeting, like getting a report down. Very well. Anyone else? Entertain a motion to receive and file the DDA executive director's report. So moved. Support. All those in favor, please give aye. 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 Opposed? Item nine, Mr. Lamb. Orient Community Cable Communication Commission proposed 2021 budget joint resolution. Uh, this being my first experience with the Orient Cable Commission budget and after uh, some other members pointed out some of the facts to me. I, I'm looking at their their budget is $735,000 of income. Um, they have $3 million in the bank. They have uh, total expenses for this year of $600,000, and they're going to have a balance uh, contingency amount of $200,000. I wonder why they uh, need so much money. I, I did read through the report uh, for the in item 10 there. Uh, budget report and it says that these you know three million is earmarked for capital expenditures or something but I'm wondering what are they saving up for and where does the revenue come from and should maybe we not get as, as um, someone else suggested to me but maybe they should cut cut back on their fees or where does the seven I don't really know Joe peg, peg fees. yeah where does the uh, seven hundred thirty five thousand dollars come from Peg fees. Peg fees, which so are they get they get the money for letting people use their cable. Okay, I'm on the cable. I'm on the OCCC. Okay. Um, Thank you. I am still learning this. It's very new to me. These guys are, um, they're very good and they take it slow. But still, bear with me. It's still new. Um, so my understanding is that they get peg fees for you letting people use the cable or letting companies and whatnot use the, the cable. So it's not like they're getting it from taxes. Um, so they get that. Now, why they're earmarking it for the future is uh, there's some um, political stuff that's going on and uh, also streaming services are reducing the amount of money uh, or reducing what their their income is is because you don't need the cable lines when you're streaming. So um, it's actually quite a big threat right now. You know, in in several years, what's going to happen with that? So they're earmarking money for the future. Okay, so they're that's saving my the money understanding. Up. Okay, so it's and it is it does show in here that it's being saved for future capital expenses. Kind of yeah. like we wish we had for our sewer program. 
Yep, yep. Okay, I, that was my big question, and thank you. Uh, Sarah. Sorry, it was so elementary. I, I it, 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 and everyone on the OCCC, see, I apologize for that explanation, but it's the best I can do right now. I think you did a good job, Sarah. <laughs> so, entertain a motion to receive and file. Point of order, President Van Portley. This ha has the resolution on the budget has to be adopted. It's a joint resolution with Orient Township. It's on page 153. So I'll move to adopt resolution 2022-001 um, joint resolution with Orient Township for approving the 2021 OCCCC budget. Second. And what did you say was the uh, packet page that that was on? 133. There was a... Uh, Okay. Good. We have a motion and we have support. All those in favor, please make it aye. 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 Opposed? And item 10. Orient Community Cable Community. Orient Community Cable Community Commission 2020 Financial Audit Report, Mr. Lamb. I, 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 I use that as the basis for my question and with item 9. That had the $3 million. Um, your mark in this document, so it concluded it. I'm satisfied we to move to, um, is that an accept yet? I move to receive and file the Orion Community Cable Communications Commission financial audit report as of for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2020. Second. I read the Appendix C of the management's comments and findings on page 173 packet page there's four items there and i just thought that uh, a few of them were noteworthy one of them addresses the federal deposit insurance corporation and reporting increases in both the number of insolvent uh, insurance coverage minimum xyz number two the council should reassess the number of representatives it allows to be sent to conferences and seminars Number three, with regard to certain bank accounts that are invested, the very low interest rates, uh, might want to give authorization to purchase FDIC insured certificates. I thought that was very important. And number four, the commission should include in its board meetings, members meeting packets, a copy of the commission's bank statements, which would allow them to see monthly activity in its bank accounts. I thought that was important. I just wanted to note those were takeaways for me. We have a motion and support on the floor. All those in favor of receiving file? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Moving on. Item seven, approval of the agenda. Nothing else has changed on this agenda this evening. Move to approve the agenda. Second. All those in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 Opposed? Item number eight, public hearings. We have none. Item number nine, agenda items for consideration. Item eight, financial matters. Number one, invoice register and bill approval. Mr. Young. Yes, Council, this evening we have a December 17th check run, a total of 26302 dollars and 12 cents of which uh, there are DD expenses of $4,978.02. And then there's payroll bills paid December 21st and January 4th in the amount of $45,296.23. And then there's a January 6th invoice register, the total amount of $132,989.91, of which $9,632.28 are DDA expenses. The motion, recommended motion, does uh, break out the DDA total of those uh, two bill runs in the motion itself. So, any questions? Entertain a motion first. Move to approve the December 17 check run of $21,324.10. Payroll bills paid December 21st and January 4th of $45,296.23 and the January 6, 2022 invoice register report of 
$357.63 and receive and file the DDA bills of $14,610.30. Support. Discussion? Comments? Mr. Young, I'm going to have a couple sure. small things, please. Sure. Like on packet page 176, there's the Department of Public Works Fund 125. Yes. One, two, three, four, the fifth item down, Road Commission for Open Fuel for PD and DPW. Yes. I just, it kind of tricked me there for a second. I thought PD. So then it made me want to ask the question, are they not broken out? And I did see that it's broken out into PD, so it might just say for DPW. Well, it's a bill that's they send to us that's both police and DPW, and then we break out the cost. I'm just saying on this bill. I'm just saying as a matter of the uh, description. Invoice description. Yeah, I understand. Okay, yes. no problem. Same way on uh, PD, but. Do you also, if there's typos in here, do you want to be told about those? Because it's a matter of record. I'm sorry again. If there's a typo. Oh yeah, sure. You'd like to be aware oh, yeah. of that? Sure, we want things as accurate as possible. Okay. Uh, packet page 181. Very top, third line down, professional services. For yes, numbers. I see it. Thank Got you, it. sir. That's it for me. Uh, oh, 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 I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, I still don't see dates on here, and if we could get the dates back on, because it's really helpful for me to see oh, sorry. when these are being invoiced. Yeah. Very good. I have a question. Mr. Hobbs? Um, back to the, the DPW on page 176. Yes. You got uh, repair and maintenance for vehicles, Jerry's Tire, uh, yes. Tire Repairs. For three thousand, I just was wondering what kind of tire repairs there. That, well, they really were six new tires okay. for the dump truck, and that's a state uh, account that they have that we get a very good rate. That's where all the police car tires go. They go to Jerry's up in Flint because that's a state uh, bid. Okay. But it was for six tires for the dump truck. So, and then I noticed on 182 the same same thing that. And then they got uh, fourteen or fourteen hundred dollars, roughly, at Jerry's Tire um, Repair again. I could help you with that. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> I inquired about it twice now. Same question. We're driving to Terry's Tires in Flint, Michigan, approximately thirty-eight miles and forty-five minutes one way to get some repair services done, and. They have a state negotiated contract for uh, tires and repair services that supposedly is the best price around. But uh, more importantly, is they're the only ones that carry the tractor tires that we require mm -hmm. and the larger size tires, I believe, for the dump truck as well. Um, I'm going to look at it a little bit further because I, I don't quite think that that's probably accurate. Our, our DPW does utilize local. Uh, tire centers for additional tires after that. But you're correct, between those two, it represents $4,900 in fees. And then uh, there's mileage and, and uh, labor costs and so on and so forth. So it, it, I think that I'm going to look at it a little bit further and see if there might be an opportunity. And they also provide and service some of the police vehicles as well. Mr. Narcissus, I touched that. Yeah, well, and I was going to jump in on that. The reason Jerry's Tire um, has phenomenal prices, and I use them, I use them here for police car tires, and I changed uh, where I'm at now. Um, if if we go in and just get kind of a government discount, and then we get the Michigan My Deal price, and Jerry's offers the My Deal price in police car tires, it's a um, double. To the price. Uh -huh. So what I pay to Jerry's, if I buy one of my local vendors, even at a discount, it's double the price. So the my deal price is phenomenal, and they are a partner with that. So the savings is really substantial, and it's worth the drive. Um, it's it's worth the drive. Okay. So, well, my basic question was just what what were the repairs? You know, were they repairing leaks or getting new tires? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So those new prices, tires. you know. <laughs> 
Mr. Young, can you answer that as far as what they were repairing? Oh, he, he said they, were, they got some new tires. What, for the, the 3,000, then the, the $1,464, uh, it's one tire for $500 and then a straight <coughs> plate wheel for $825. Um, it doesn't tell me what vehicle, but um, that I can decipher. So it's a separate bill. I can get more detail for you tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, and I, and I guess that was my comment is whatever the price is there, if you go, it's unfortunate, but I wish more local places maybe could get into that, but you got to be volume. Um, those prices would be double. It is the going rate. Um. Anyone else? We have a motion on the floor support and roll call, please. Todd? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Luxinger? Yes. Nars? Yes. Van Porfleet? Yes. Rudd? Yes. Matheson? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. Item 2 Financial Reports, December 2021. Mr. Young. Yes, Council, we have the December budget report, revenue expense report, and the balance sheet as of December 31. Um, as I stated uh, last week, we're getting an update on the uh, census where. Uh, we have a reduction based on what the count is at this time and indicated it could be anywhere to $10,000 in general fund and about 8,000 in street funds. We're hoping that it will not be retroactive. Uh, we talked and uh, we, t we had an MML live webinar today and there are challenges going to be made to the undercount of the census where also, and they would advise us in college towns, they overcounted. So we're challenging that because uh, we, we saw a reduction of, to 97 people, which we know from 10 years ago doesn't, is not right. So we're looking to get that addressed. Uh, the other thing we learned today is the ARP money, ARPA money, uh, that uh, we received half of it this year, 166,894. Uh, last year, we'll receive another this year. They came out with the final rules on Friday, the federal government, and have now allowed that you can claim as revenue loss uh, anything under $10 million. So our little $333,000 will be uh, able to be used uh, for capital improvements or COVID expenses. Um, without any further financial, other than reporting that's what our intent is, that we're going to be using it for revenue loss. So that money would be available for uh, many things except pensions, reducing taxes, um, judgment payments, um, and I can't remember the other three things. But anyway, if you use it for capital outlay improvement projects, whether it's water, sewer, parks, whatever, it's the village council discretion. and. Now that we have those rules, we'll be addressing that. We have f four years to, to spend this money and identify where to spend it. But um, as you know, we have quite a list of needs, so we'll be needing to uh, address that. But anyway, I just wanted to give you the good news about the ARPA money. And there are also, uh, there's new grant money that will be coming out where we could use that ARPA money as a 10% 10, 10 match. Uh, which we'll, we don't know those uh, details of the grants until, as they say, now April. But again, we have had some time to, to determine that. So that's all I have on the report, unless there's any questions. Just that they've also made that the reporting that we would have to do very simple and streamlined it um, greatly. So it's really a, a great, it's a great situation for us. Yes. Yes. Do you want a motion first before comment? Yes, okay, then I will move to receive and file the financial reports for December 31st, 2021. Support. And then my comment, Mr. Young, you mentioned that we can challenge the census. Um, what's the process? I'm just curious what the process for that. And I say this because as I was reading our Parks and Rec draft master plan, 
when I was looking at the census numbers and the increase in household size and the increase in total number of households, it just wasn't adding up to me how we lost population. So I'm right. just really curious what that process is. Well, SEMCOG, the Southeast Michigan Council of Government, does a lot of data gathering, including getting our building permits. Mm -hmm. So they know when there are new houses and they track it and they do all the projections. And they're the ones that are saying we had 3,189 people, which we got the ARPA money from, ARPA money. So we're going to be coordinating with them. Ken and I talked with um, the gentleman a week or so ago, and we're going to provide them uh, what we have permits for and then future developments so that he can track for us. He, he did, had, did not sound too promising about challenging, but I think um, SEMCOG, I mean, uh, MML and others are going to Push, push the issue very out. Well, as you know, the city of Detroit, big time had losses, but uh, they definitely miscalculated. That was uh, for reference. SEMCOG was in reference to the 2050 plan, where Joe and I discussed with this gentleman about all of the uh, uh, growth in our community and developments for their um, data collection. And then the last two things you were looking for, I found my notes, sir, okay. is on the American Rescue Plan Act, you had mentioned that you cannot use those funds for debt or pension or tax reduction. No tax reductions are allowed. No judgments is the mm -hmm. other thing, or rainy day funds. Correct. Or the other two. Those are the five criteria. Right. Right. Thank you. We have a motion for anybody else? Uh, can you refresh me what item we're on? <laughs> we are on packet page two. Uh, 187. 187, and it's financial reports, December 2021. Okay. okay. So I have a, a couple of comments about that report. Sure. Um, most recently, I commented to the village manager that uh, the DDA is planning to publish uh, their annual report in the newspaper, and they are going to represent that the, you know, lion's share of their uh, expenses are for um, downtown development. What was the exact word, Mr. Young? I'm sorry? What was the exact uh, uh, definition of the $556,000 of DDA expenses that are going to be in the report? Well, it's, it's under the audit report and state's charter of accounts. It's called yeah. community development. Yeah, so, so they're lumping all of the DDA's expenses um, in the newspaper is community development. And I, I objected uh, to Mr. Young and I, and I asked him that they, they break this down and represent to the public that the DDA's expenses aren't all community development unless you, that's how they characterize them. And it, as I look at, at this report, the revenue expenditure report for the Village of Lake Orion, packet page uh, 189, I, I note that the general revenues from taxes, uh, property taxes for the village is approximately $1.5 million. And then the general revenues for the Downtown Development Authority from property taxes are half of that, $700,000. I just want to point out again that the DDA budget appears to be tremendous um, with regard to the size of our community. And these dollars might be spent elsewhere, and I, and I think it's irresponsible to report the $565,000 in DDA expenses for office rent, credit cards, education, mileage, as community development expenditures. And that's what I have to comment on this report. Is that it, sir? Yes, sir. Anyone else? So we have a motion on the floor and support. All those in favor indicate the aye. Uh, aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Moving on to item B, other items. Number one, first reading, proposed ordinance number 26, 104, tax amendment to the zoning ordinance, article 11, planned unit development, PUD, tax amendment, postponed from December 13th, 2021 meeting. Council President, can we postpone it for two more minutes? Sure. For please. a bathroom yeah. break? Thank you. Go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Two minute brief recess, please. Thank you.
Sorry, right. this item is carried over from the last council meeting on the recommendation from the Planning Commission to uh, adapt this uh, modification of the PUD ordinance, which uh, has a number of changes, streamlining it. Uh, there are some uh, specific items dealing with density that are significant. Uh, the first one being on page two, um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Um, let's have a second. So, the one and a half times um, on page 246, um, the village council, the planning commission uh, can uh, allow up to one and a half times units per gross acre. Um, and the ordinance draft, uh, it doesn't show in here, but it said may be considered. <coughs> see where that's at. I'm looking at the wrong page. Oh, here it is. Page 233. I'm sorry. It says on the bottom density on red, it says may, shall be considered up to a maximum of one and a half. There it is right here. So I wanted to point that out. And then on page um, 247, I believe. Um, it's, yeah, page 247. It eliminates the additional uh, provision for the 20% increase um, at the council's discretion on top of the one and a half times. So, um, see, page 247 right here on the top. So, this Section is all struck out. This item number three, the additional 20% dwelling units may be at discretion of the council. That is eliminated. And the Planning Commission was trying to, is, is addressing their concern of too high a density. Um, we already changed the formula from a per unit from one and two bedroom, which was between uh, 10 and 12 units an acre to 15 units an acre, regardless of the type of unit. And then uh, that's already been approved. And now they're asking consideration to further limit it, uh, in part because it tends to set a target for developers coming in, which it was as obvious. I mean, it's allowed under the ordinance currently as it exists today. Um, so that's the general high points uh, at this point. I bring it back to council for discussion and consideration of uh, setting up, approving it for first reading and setting up adoption and the February meeting if that's the council's desire. Second, I'd like to begin by uh, a motion. Mr. Lamb. Uh, I move to accept ordinance number 26.104, an <coughs> amendment to the Village of Lake Orion Zoning Ordinance, text amendments, Article 11, Planned Unit Development Text Amendment for first reading, and to schedule the second reading and consideration for adoption for Monday, February 14th, 2022. Second. So open it up for discussion. Council members, any comments, anything that you might want to see different? Ms. Rutt. I have a few questions. I'm not, so my background is not city planning. I'm trying to dive into this a little bit more. I was reading some articles from the EPA and different things. But I just have a couple questions, mostly about the historical use of the PUD in the community. What percentage do you know of developments in the last five to 10 years have been approved using the PUD process versus just our standard zoning? So two have been approved in the last five. How, even deeper, are there any that have been approved of development projects not using the PUD process in the last five to 10 years? Any Probably. projects? Probably. I mean, apartment complexes. Apartment complexes, condos, it's very anything. What it's percentage? I, we know there's two Atwater and um, what was the other one? Orion Point. Okay. Orient Point and then Atwater oh, yeah. Commons is, are two of them. Because 
So I was doing some research that 40% of all new developments nationwide are, are approved using the PUD process because of restrict restrictive zoning. So my question was if a high percentage of our uh, developments are being used using the PUD process, what is it underlying that is causing them to shift to that? Uh, so those are just questions in my mind. Um, also, our PUD process allows for any parcel size to be developed using a PUD, right? There's no minute, are there, is, was there a minimum? Did I miss a minimum lot size? Because that's one of the suggestions that have been coming out is establishing a minimum lot size to use a PUD process instead. So these smaller parcels aren't being, trying to micromanage and pack densely. Um, and was, did I also miss, did I miss, was there something about parking in here? Or were there not? It allows for a variance for parking. Okay, it just allows for variance. Do you have a page on where it talks no, about parking? I'm, I'm I think sometimes looking. the pages just blend together this for me. Parking circulation, it's on page 247 on the bottom, it says circulation parking and loading. What about uh, 234 on, on those? So on the new one, is there, oh, circulation parking. Okay, so just authority to recommend modifications to the minimum. So there is no actual number. No. Minimum or maximum. Okay. No. Uh, I, the, the zoning ordinance actually <coughs> has those Correct. provisions. But the planning commission can recommend modifications to that zoning ordinance. Yeah. That, okay. That's correct. And they have a one case that's pending currently. Right. Yes. Anything else? Those are my initial questions yeah. at the moment. Uh, I, would, I would have to say that what has been done with the two multi-use developments that were stated earlier, Orient Point and uh, Atwater, Commons. Atwater Commons, they were both PDs. And uh, there's potential of approximately three new ones, four new ones right now. Is it, my neighborhood was also PUD because yes, that's it what we're zoned too, so that's right. an, another a single one. family, so. <laughs> but it's still through the PUD process. Sure. Right. Whatever the development ended up being, it right. was still approved for the PUD, through the PUD process. Right. Right. And that's what I wanted to know. Whatever it ended up being, um, was it through standard zoning? And is there something that's prohibitive just in our standard zoning that everything has to go through? the PUD process, because it, it seems like everything has to go through the PUD process, and I think we have a bigger problem, um, no, the bigger it's picture drive, but. It's, it's an option for the developer and the village to consider and prove it, because the only reason we would consider, part of the reason is we get a greater benefit in design and in the, the end product than we would under a plain zoning ordinance, a zoning allowance. We can ask for more landscaping and type of materials and other amenities that we wouldn't normally be able to negotiate without them voluntarily. In this case, if they don't meet what we want, the council doesn't have to prove it. And the PUD. And they use it as a tool to get higher density. Right. right. That was going to be my follow-up question. Is the primary purpose or is there any other purpose that they would pursue a PUD other than higher density? The developer? Yeah. Or is that the only reason we've ever? We haven't seen it since. Okay. We haven't seen it in recent time. Every PUD application that Joe has shown me has been to for higher density. Okay. Some of the projects, as we're aware, are more favorable because they they did a combination development where there was a nice little piece of commercial right. and some residential mix. But the current impetus in our community is high density apartment complexes. Yeah, so the I was just wondering what, if there was another reason they would have pursue a PUD versus traditional, <laughs> except for density. Is there? Mixed use. Combination okay. of retail okay. Mixed use. and residential. Yeah. The introduction intent is, you know, six different purposes but of Arnold. having. Page uh, 232. Kind of broached the subject at the last meeting. Um, I know it was, uh, there was discussion amongst uh, some members of council, some members of the planning commission that kind of got this thing going. Um, I'm just 
really, really against specifically um, removing uh, or changing uh, some terminology from qualifying from eligibility criteria to qualifying conditions. Uh, the semantics don't tip me over so much, but I, from the overall conversation of the value of a PUD, especially to a village our size, um, PUDs, as was mentioned, have uh, mixed use uh, ability. There is um, the ability of council to influence uh, certain factors uh, within a PUD. So there's advantages for the developer and there are advantages for the community. And when you look at what the property sizes and parcels the village has left, and when you look at the master plan and the idea that we bring housing, uh, additional housing and people, um, when you look at uh, as a minor offense to this, uh, what we're losing in uh, the, the terrible way the census is counted. But part of the master plan was to bring additional housing into the village. So if you take a four acre parcel that's along M24, um, most developers aren't gonna come in on that property and build you know, $800,000 homes, uh, a budding a restaurant, another uh, multi-family unit development in M24. And we have the potential for meeting the uh, objective of the master plan, but it is entirely up to this council. And I'm extremely concerned that if we eliminate, and I strongly object to, the elimination of the density options and the additional 20% that is at the will of the council. Um, anytime we have, and I, I would, I think, remind this council, if you look at other communities who have the PUD, I, I can't think of any, and I've looked at some, who's taken away the options of the governing body in order to assess the value of the PUD and its benefit to that community, because each one's different. Each community is different. Each proposal is different. And I look at what we have, um, Teresa brought up a valid point. It's single family residential, but there are um, developments that we have that have benefited this village. Uh, I know a lot of really great folks that are friends of mine that are active in the community that live at Atwater Commons. Um, if, if we applied, if, if this proposed changes were drafted, we would not have Atwater Commons the way it sits today. We would not have Teresa's subdivision the way it sits today. Um, we that's would not, not true, Jerry. We, not well, true. That's, that's not true. To, to the extent, true. Talking I'll, about I'll give you a minute to comment when I'm done. Hang on, it's fine. I'm sorry. Uh, the Pelton's Point developed. Um, we're looking at what is happening now with the Amon Center. Um, I think there's tremendous uh, opportunity and good uh, for the village. It isn't that I'm arguing for density, um, but I, I'm extremely cautious to take away something that this council, whoever that will end up being, it's not just us, but to take away part of the flexibility of the PUD if it's in the best interest of the village to allow additional density for a specific site. Um, so those are my comments. Um, and I, I, there are other changes in here and I understand, uh, and, and you know, those are fine uh, to me, but um, to take away uh, an ability for this council to offer or not offer based on the value that this council believes would be in the best interest of the village to me is just handcuffing what could be a something very beneficial to the village. Mr. Lamb. So not to excuse, sorry for interrupting you, Derek. I just, we're talking here, we're talking about a 20% additional bonus. So recently this year, last year, we increased the density to 15 units per acre from 12. We've already increased the density. That, excuse me, sir. That actually is not totally accurate. There was a formula scale. It could have been eight, 10, or 12, according to the number of one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom units. 
Yes. So a medium might have been 10, yes. and we gave a uh, st single standard of 15 per acre. My point so is that there was a large increase. increase in greatly increased. We already greatly increased the base number for density in the village. It's the highest it's ever been. Am I correct? On top of that, with much discussion at the Planning Commission, we agreed that even with the higher 15% density, which is higher already than it ever has been, we're still going to allow the 50% increase. Up to? Up to, which is still the highest number it's ever been. And our discussion was, why do we need to have the council at an arbitrary point decide to grant someone 20%? It, cre it creates, a, I personally believe it created a lot of stress on the council and on the administration, uh, the developers lobbying for that extra 20%. We've already granted them more than they've ever gotten in village history. So after much discussion at the Planning Commission, it was, none of the discussions were totally unanimous, just like they aren't here. Uh, we agreed to this compromise, which was to recommend the 20% to be removed because we're already above that when, during these previous projects, we're already at a higher density with the 50% bonus in the 15 units per acre. So we're not taking away. What we're doing is we're taking our increase and keeping it from being a huge increase. If some project came up, uh, uh, you could easily come here before the council and argue that you wanted to put a huge development of some special character, and we could go through this process for that single development. If it was that germane, that relevant, that important to our community, we could easily pass a resolution modifying these ordinances to accommodate a special project. All the Planning Commission's intention, I believe, is to keep the density from skyrocketing out of control. And those are the actual facts. We went from 10 to 15, and then 15 times 1.5, so it'd be do the math. So the 20% is really, without the 20%, they're still getting more now than they ever got in the past. And that's what I've been trying to elaborate. I would like to add something to that real quick, if I could. You, you hit the nail on the head there about the pressure, because the way it used to work and has for the last few PUDs is the developer comes in here and starts working on the pressure of the boards to get an automatic 20%. They start lobbying for it from the very beginning. And so it's difficult because one of the other things that happens is, and we've already had it stated in some of the new plans, is a PUD developer will say, well, I'm gonna ask for my 20% like you gave to the last development. And what's the liability there? It's big. If you have it on the books, it's a true liability. If it's not on the books, it takes that liability away. In the last PUD review, our public, uh, call it a public, we had about 43 people come in and talk about the merit of the PUD. No matter if they were against or for, almost every one of them said, but I would like to see a little less density and people said that's why I moved here is because I like to have a rural community and I'm concerned about density so I took that to heart and I'm looking at much like Mr. Narsh had said whoever the next council may be or not be whoever it may be density is something that I don't want to see rule our community in the development process um, we gifted already by moving it from that 8, 10, 12 factor to 15. And um, we do have a developer currently that is looking at some property that is not concerned about density. The ability to build the 800,000 or whatever number it may be dollar home is of attraction. That exists. Mr. Narch. And, and, and I agree to some of those points. That new developer uh, is a lakefront uh, development and that, that fits. A lot of the other developments or the properties available 
um, don't necessarily fit and you won't have developers coming in. Um, you'll have developers coming in, you've got a, a seller and they want to sell that property. You could have a residential opportunity or you could have uh, some form of commercial uh, that is not residential, uh, such as storage units or other things that could come in and replace uh, residential. And to Mr. Lamb's point where he said if you get a special development that comes in, if we like that development, we could go back and amend this ordinance to fix what we're trying to break here right now. Um, what I'm suggesting to council is simply leave this option available instead of going back in and telling the developer to hold on so we can amend an ordinance to fix it the way it was before we broke it so we could grant them uh, a, a up to 20% if that's in the best interest of the village. So the issue is what are the developers looking to buy? It's my understanding that condos aren't the thing anymore, um, and especially in our community. Now, maybe in other places, but in my discussions with development, they're, they're looking more at uh, uh, apartment development in the more condensed spaces that we have. What do we have available? And what's the best use for that to meet the master plan? It's not that I'm arguing for density, and I would argue seriously if we go back and take a look at that. Uh, I was keeping notes. Uh, the discussion uh, that the uh, council uh, president was discussing was on the west development. Um, there were several, almost everybody in the room, the highest majority of the people were in, in uh, they supported the development. Um, there were people that talked about density, but it was certainly not the majority of people. Um, I have talked to a lot of people, I've had some people talk about density, but they said that same density on every development that we've had. Um, there was a strong pushback on the Kroger. I was a part of that debate. Uh, I was asked to change Elizabeth Street one way because all the trucks were going to come through and wreck our town. Um, we did not want to have um, the four-story, there were people who were against the four-story building downtown, uh, the apartment building there, and there was questions over the park. Um, uh, Sarah's business is there. Um, we have people that work here that live there. Um, it's a beautiful development. Um, I, I, the only thing I'm trying to debate is, and, and I get it, um, but to look at each PUD as it comes before council with the options that are the best interest of the village, if we take away options, I certainly don't want to have to amend an ordinance to fix uh, something we're taking out now to benefit one specific if we find oh my gosh had we not changed this that would be a good uh, a good development for what this person is trying to bring uh, I just don't want to take away uh, and I would hope that a council can debate that with the developer as they come in and uh, make those determinations um, but that that's that's my concern is that we don't handcuff or limit our ability to bring the right development to the right parcel. Not every parcel is going to bring the same type of development. And if you don't, then that seller is going to sell to someone else who may not be a parcel that benefits our master plan. That's my concern. I would like to just go ahead and just run. Oh, I just had a couple questions. Do other communities allow for a 20% increase? Is, there, uh, is that a common thing in other communities? My little brief research, many of the more enlightened communities that have large demographics and huge communities, their PUD ordinances don't even have any set density. The PUD is something that someone comes in and makes a proposal, and then the whole purpose of the PUD is to evaluate the proposal and make it fit for the community. Some of the longest discussions we had at the Planning Commission were whether or not there should be any bonuses or multipliers or anything. And so compromise was made. But a lot of these communities, most of these communities don't have an arbitrary 50%. You, you get nothing unless you ask for it, and then you've got to make presentations at the planning level to justify these actions, and then if they're suitable, then recommendations are made to council, and then could they have to make their... So the whole process, you could come in and ask for a triple density in these communities. 
but there's no fixed standard. What we're doing here is just taking what we have and trying to rein it in a little bit. Yeah, one of the, it's got one of the things I was reading as I was researching some of the PUDs is that a lot of places are pretty unregulated and it becomes just this very political process that people come in and it's each one is there there are no standards. And when you made the comment of like rewriting, you know, and Mr. Narsh commented on that, in my mind, like if this is passed, there is no let's go back and rewrite. Because that gets really tricky, that gets political, it's either it's this, and this is what governs it. And it's not, okay, but I think you're really special, so let's go back and do that for you, and then let's backtrack, because then what's the point of this anyway, if we're, if we're going that route? This, um, this says if you're special. In here, specifically, the language says, if you're special and exceptional, we will grant you these things. The problem is, is that we've been granting them to people that are not exceptional and special. They just, whatever's in the book, they get it, that's it. So they're getting what's ever in this book, maximum, every time. Every single time they're getting the maximum allowed by the PUD ordinance without restriction. No one's ever throttled them back or said, no, you only get so They get the maximum. So the Planning Commission's recommendation was to take a little bit of that down. Well, my mind then, still by your comments saying we can still do it, it's essentially if you're special, but there are more hoops we can jump, we have to jump through to make it for you. Instead of just saying, well, if we kept it, we actually just have to have a backbone and say, no, you're not special enough. Uh, so in my mind, if we pass this, this is what it is. I'm not gonna consider like, hey, you're special and play that political game, if that oh, makes that's, sense. That's great. If that makes like, sense. That's fine. Um, what, and what, the, well, just one more comment yeah. too. Um, one thing I do like about this as opposed to the other is it's probably, a little bit more streamlined for administration purposes rather than the back and forth about the percentage. Um, but also, did the Planning Commission consider, instead of saying maybe a 20% increase, let's bring it down, you could be considered for a 10% increase? You can. You can be mm -hmm. considered for up to 50% increase. It could be 10% or 20. Or I mean, on top of. So the way it was written before, it's council could grant up to a 20% increase on top of whatever. Did the planning commission think about like, well, we know some people want to keep an increase. What about a compromise of 10%, even mm -hmm. though they're still administrative? So just asking the questions. No, they didn't. This is what they, after much discussion and debate, uh, I of course lobbied for no, you know, multiplier. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the general consensus was this document Ms. Lessinger. To add to um, uh, Councilmember Rutt's comments, um, instead of having it be a separate thing, the village council being a separate thing, um, the uh, considered up to a maximum density of 1.5 units, if the zoning or if uh, whoever makes that decision only grants 1.2 or 1.3, then it goes to the village council and we can get up to that 1.5. That would be where our discretion is. So the maximum amount that's, that any um, builder could get or developer could get is 1.5. And our discretion would come in if they are granted anything less than 1.5. Does that make sense, what I'm like saying? If Planning Commission recommends 1.5, yeah. we could come in and say, no, Or if they recommend 1.3. Yeah. We could oh, yeah, come in and say, OK, we recommend doing it all the way up to 1.5. Mr. Young. Uh, I did want to comment about the percentage. Some are saying that the target for the developer is the 1.5 and the 20 percent. In the original draft that McKenna submitted to streamline this, they took the 20 percent out and left it at the total discretion of the council. So there was no target. So that was originally proposed because that's what many communities have. They do not have a density limit. It's up to what you can convince the council to that merit to the level for the benefits you're providing the community to grant it. So there's another alternative to consider not having a limit, let it, the full council have total discretion on it without having a target for the developer. Mr. Young is correct, and that was debated at the Planning Commission. 
this, what's here today is what the Planning Commission, right. the majority, I think it was unanimous, quite honestly, it doesn't matter. suggested that come before council. Mr. Narsh. Um, the comment I'd have about the up to 500%, depending upon council, that is not available if we change this, correct? Uh, we're not leaving it. In other words, there's a 20% option here. If we remove this, um, do we, we still have a 50% option or a 20%? You can modify this draft. That well, that, that, see, that's what I'm trying to get at. And I'd just like to finish up by saying this. Whenever we sit down, and I've been a party of uh, drafting ordinances and laws um, for a long, long time, and the purpose that you fix an ordinance is because it's broke. So I throw this to this body. I've heard tonight that all these developers have been coming downtown and getting these things and forcing this density upon us. I would like somebody here tonight to tell me the evil or bad or unfair developments that we have in this community right now that shouldn't be here as a result of this PUD. As the ordinance the way it's been, I've heard this several times that we're always under this pressure and we're succumbing to this as a council and we're giving up these developments. Which developments are they that are not in the best interest of the village that right now are in existence because of this existing PUD? And let's talk about which ones shouldn't be. I'd like to change that slightly by saying to look at the past does not provide for the runaway situation that we're going to experience in the future. And what has happened, again, let's just do some simple math. Before it used to be a common denominator of we we're going to use the 10 units per acre plus 50 percent, which was 15 then, then another 20 percent on top of that, which would make it 18 units per acre. That was the past. If you had a high density situation which gained you the 12, it would be 12 plus six would be 18, plus 20%, which would be 21.6, okay? Max. We have a lot of people that have said, watch your density, please watch the density in our community. Today, this has changed to 15 units per acre as a standard. Now the math on that would be 15 and 50%, which makes it 22.5. If there's another 20% put on top of that, that's another 4.5. So it goes to 23, 27 units per acre. Before, the developments we had, which there are none bad, had a maximum, what did I say earlier, 21? Now we're looking at 27. We have parking issues. Along with those densities that they claim they have to have, they need to reduce their two parking places per unit to 1.5, 1.7. So we end up with parking problems too that they are asking for us to give away. What this ordinance does is it does not create any improper barriers going forward. If anything, at the 15 plus 1.5 possible, you got 22.5, which exceeds what was available before. We're just making sure that, or what this ordinance is doing, is just making sure that it doesn't become a runaway situation. There still can be great developments done. There's still a lot of opportunity here in the community for people to develop. There's no fear tactics here. When we talk about Kroger, Kroger is not in the village. That's a township development. When we talk about the four story and parking, that's all we talk about is parking. It wasn't a density question, it was a parking question, which got alleviated by the developer buying additional property in the back and adding additional parking. Accurate, Mr. Young? And Ms. Lessinger, do you have something you want to say? Um, to, so 
sort of play devil's advocate a little bit to what you said, Jerry, or what your question was. You know, what, what currently is here that shouldn't have been? Um, I think that's a very polarizing question, and I don't know if anybody here is going to willingly fess that up because it, it's, it's also, you know, a personal belief. Um, but let's instead look at the near misses that we've had or might have had. I haven't been on the board that long, so I don't know what these near misses are. Um, the headache of trying to make an argument against, you know, Joe Schmo coming in and trying to do a bit, you know, getting this 1.5 times and then an extra 20 percent and trying to get everything. Um, we want to prevent that and make it, you know, more of a streamlined process. So if we have all of these caveats, you know, you can get 1.5 times and then you can get another 20 percent on top of that. It just, it con it, it just makes the whole process convoluted and confusing. Confusing to, you know, us, confusing to the residents who are, may or may not be upset about the development. So for, um, and, and we do need some uh, easing of the processes around here. Um, so, you know, if we're not going to do, if, you know, the, the big thing is you want some council input as to that 20%, that's, uh, I, I bring back to my up to 1.5 times per cent, or 1.5 1, 1, 1 times, um, you know, we could get that recommendation from the planning and then anything that's, you know, they don't recommend up to that 1.5 times, we do, if we, if we think it's appropriate. And that would help with um, keeping one number in mind and also, making sure that um, we're not playing favorites and we're, we don't have to, you know, tell everyone that they're not special enough to get the extra 20 percent. And, and I didn't mean that as a polarizing question. I meant it as a fact-based question. We're having this discussion and we continually say that we're being pressured and council is being, um, we're having to make these decisions. So I'm asking a, just a factual database question. How many developments do we have in the village that this process led us down that path and that it didn't turn out in the best interest of the village? And the reason I mentioned Kroger is it isn't just the Krogers in the village or the township, it borders the village, but it became a village debate, a big one, because of traffic and Elizabeth Street and the, the idea, the fear was that that Kroger development was just going to wreck uh, peace and security. The same thing happened with Robertson Brothers subdivision. It was, uh, what, 140 homes, I think? Robertson Brothers. And it was a massive. It was uh, Camp Frank and uh, all the crime that was going to occur. And those things didn't happen. And it's not that there isn't an increase in traffic. Those things occurred, but nothing that is tipping over the peace and tranquility of the village. The same with Atwater Commons. Um, there's, what, 200 and some units down there, and they actually have approval for more that they can develop. But it's peaceful, it's quiet. Um, th there's that fear that um, the developers are coming in and putting these in. But I just, I'm asking that in an honest question of anybody here tonight that could tell me a development that took advantage of this that's in the village right now that isn't in the best interest of the village. And if those don't exist, it's a tool that council has to do what's in the best interest of the village. That's all. It's, it, I, I'm not trying to make it polarizing. I just think personally. Well, it, it is polarizing because Ken just explained to you that the, the maximum density has been increased by something like 30% through the recent actions of the council. And you're asking us to go back and look at other projects that had this. They, this has changed since then, Jerry. With the 15 percent, 15 units per acre, it's changed significantly. It's a 50 percent increase for the 10 units per acre. To go to 15, it's a 50 percent increase, plus they're going to get an additional 50 percent and another 20 percent. Huge changes from the times you're talking about all these projects. This ordinance has changed tremendously. And the Planning Commission, in evaluating this, and you've got to look at it in the context of the community. 
Each one of the new projects that's been presented over the last year that I've been on the Planning Commission has asked for a huge parking variance. They're asking for a 25% parking variance minimum. So they want 30% more density than ever before in the, in the history of the village. And then they want to give 25% less parking on top of that. But I, you had I, the ability to deny the parking variance, right? Oh, that hasn't come up yet. The Eman Center that's... right now, the Eman Center project right now is hinging on a vote for the parking. And so which one of you wants to kill the Eman Center over a two parking space per? This is what we're talking Pressure. about. But just trash the Eman Center project and all the talks and presentations of historic preservation because they don't have enough parking, but they deserve to because they're going to take a crappy old building and fix it up. It's off on the outskirts of the village. It affects only a half a dozen residents in the school and the tire people. So there's some really, it's a really big issue. It's not something petty. And taking a little bit of power away from the council, I, you know, I'm okay with that. I don't need to have executive say over everything in the village. So it's a big issue. Bro. Mr. Hobbs, sir. Okay. Uh, you said there's a uni unanimous uh, vote on this from the from I the said from what I recall, it was pretty much unanimous in support. Okay. I trust what they're doing. That's why we have them. Thank you. So I'm going along with what they did. Any other comments? We have a motion on the floor to accept for first reading, and that's the activity tonight. So um, all those in favor, we have a motion and support. And all those in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. Motion passed. Moving on to call the public, reopen call the public for non agenda item. I actually got an email from a business owner, and I think it would be probably more appropriate to do it during the call to the public than council comments. That would be fine. Okay. Good. Go ahead. All right. So this is from the owner of Sawdust and Cider, um, who was uh, closing up shop. Um, and she said, she emailed me this. And I'm, I'm reading this so that um, the council's aware. Um, she did send an email, to, and if I can get through it without choking, um, I'll, I'll read that email too. Um, the DDA, uh, and there's a whole, you know, uh, Mr. Young, Mr. Van Portfleet, and there's a whole host of other people who are on there. Um, so anyway, I'll, I'll just read it. I want, Sarah, I wanted to forward this to you as a village council member. I very much feel as though the assistance I have gotten from the city slash village slash DDDA has been null. I very much feel like the priority here <clears throat> was to keep a pro property owner happy rather than bringing more profits and people to downtown Lake Orion, along with keeping the doors of the business open there, were, there will now be a, another empty space downtown. I wanted to bring up the immense community support and how sad the community is to see us leave. It was said that we, <clears throat> that we add a unique and creative perspective to downtown and that was needed and missing previously. We are also saddened as we have 45 local vendors who sell at, in the shop and are part of the local community, people who we go to school with, work with, et cetera. We feel like we added a true value to the uniqueness to the downtown and we are so sad to be forced to close. Um, all right, so the email that she is referring to is uh, lease termination business closing at 12 West Flint. To whom it may concern, this email is to let you know that Sawdust Insider Trading Company at 12 West Flint Street has decided to terminate our lease with the Masonic Temple. As many, okay. As many of you know, we have been battling issue upon issue since renting from this space. Initially renting from a tenant who threatened us and caused us to fear for our safety. Once this tenant was removed, we found extensive mold damage along and non-functioning and a non-functioning bathroom. To address these issues, I have paid thousands of dollars out of my own pocket to get quotes, have, re, have items removed, 
and have these items brought to my landlord's attention, all of which have fallen on deaf ears. I have 45 locally owned businesses who sell at my shop, and the saddest part of this isn't that I am losing my business or my large investment, it is that our landlords have failed these 45 small makers who relied on our shop to support their families and put food on their, food on their tables, makers of our local Lake Orion area. I have been trying to work with the Masonic Temple since August on these issues, initially working with their attorney who has also stopped responding to. Um, I have sent hundreds of text calls, voicemails, spoken with their attorney, et cetera. To be frank, the behavior from this landlord is absolutely unacceptable, unacceptable to not only keep us out of the loop, but to be okay having us in a building that is a severe health hazard, uh, not only to our employees, but to the general public, and it takes six months to even start thinking about fixing the issues. Had we not escalated the issue as we had with all of you, who knows if the mold would have ever um, been taken care of. Our business was, was incredibly successful and we thought, oh, I'm sorry, we, and we felt as though we were an asset to the downtown community. The lack of response from our landlord has caused vendors, not to, vendors to feel um, uncomfortable selling at the shop, not wanting to drop off inventory, knowing if they would have a place to sell their items, and general health concerns, which in turn will cause us loss of revenue moving forward, loss of profits, loss of funds to pay rent, et cetera. <clears throat> um, I have taken time off from my full-time job to meet with city officials, to meet with contractors, to get quotes, money out of my own pocket, to close up air openings to allow less moldy air to come through, uh, and done more as a tenant than our landlord has done by and by. A concern long-term of the city should be if funding is found uh, to help repair these issues, how will the temple plan to change, how will the temple plan be to change going forward to avoid this from happening again? The rent price is not substantial or is not sustainable to maintain or take care of a 50, 150 year old building and I believe they will not equip themselves going forward to take care of other major issues. The coating on the building is flaking off, the roof leaks, the damaged alley, the overall neglect of the building during their ownership. It is very apparent no one from the temple um, can or will step up to take responsibility as landlord. They will pref prefer to a uh, passive tenant and to be an inactive, uninvolved landlord. Please know that we are only closing um, because we truly feel backed into a corner as though we have no other option. We see no end in sight on getting these issues taken care of and know that these repairs will only scratch the surface of what is needed in this building. Should anyone have any questions or concerns, please reach out to me directly. I am happy to discuss. We feel very let down and very much as though our landlords have, felt, uh, have failed us. Um, regards, Donna Zaki, owner, Sawdust Insider Trading Company. So it sounds like there was some discussion between Sawdust and Cider and the DDA and what to do about this landlord. And I did have a conversation with her and she just felt like the community support from the, well, the support from the DDA was very much lacking. Um, so that's why I wanted to bring it up. Uh, this is the second business that's closing within a week downtown Lake Orion. And I will bring up the first one later. Um, and now I also heard, I, it, it's, um, I can't say which business because it was privately told to me, but there's gonna be a third business closing downtown. So something needs to be done um, with the community support, the DDA support of our businesses because uh, it's important to have a vivacious night, nighttime life with the restaurants and the bars, but also you know shopping. And uh, it looks like we're dwindling the shopping. All right, that's all I've got for public. Thank you. Okay, moving on to council comments. I'd like to begin again with you, Ms. Lessinger. Oh, can I just have a break? Okay. <laughs> Mr. Matheson, sir. Jeez. Nothing tonight, thank you. Mr. Hobbs. Nothing. Mr. Nars. Uh, nothing this evening. Ms. Rudd. Um, just a comment that um, there is a Parks and Rec draft master plan out there. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Committee will be reviewing it next week, Tuesday, and then it will come before council on the 24th for public hearing, but then also adoption. So I would encourage you if you have, if, to take a look before it comes before us on the 24th, 
take a look at it. If you have comments about it, please send them to me or come to our parks meeting next week, Tuesday, because we'd love your input. Um, or at least to know that you have read it and are okay with it before it comes before us on the 24th. So um, take a few moments to do that. Mr. Young can email you a copy if you don't already have that. Um, because that does, it helps guide our planning for the next five years. It also helps guide us and qualifies us for different grants or disqualifies us for different things because oftentimes when we put in a grant application, it has to be something that's in the master plan. So if we just dream up something in the middle of the master plan, we often cannot put that in an application. Um, so yeah, please do take a look at that. Um, also, you know, this PUD thing, it's moving forward. I'm still, I'm not sure that I'm totally satisfied with it, but again, we still have a second hearing on it. Um, and I'm a little less concerned about the parking thing. Maybe you, you guys are more concerned about it, but I'm a little less concerned about the, you know, two cars, two spaces in a, an apartment building unit. I mean, I've lived in apartment buildings. I know they're not all taken up all the time. So that's a little less concerning to me than some of the other things, but I will be looking at it a little bit more deeply um, and we'll have further discussion on that. Could I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, I reviewed the master plan, the Parks and Rec master plan, and help me with the intent. The intent, the current master plan is a good master plan. It's very thorough. It needs to be updated. Don't um, not read it because you're intimidated by it. Look through it. And what is the intent is to look for how it needs to be massaged for today. And are, are there any light bulbs that go off of, hey, oh, you know, this is a good idea, X, Y, Z. So it can, just by offering some of those small massaging type comments to make it a master plan that can be utilized for grant opportunities and other publications for the near future is what the intent mm -hmm. is. Yeah, and to help guide our priorities too. Like when we do find resources or when we, you know, even things, you know, outside of narrowly focused grants, like what are, what are our priorities and thinking five years from now, I mean, I could give you a list of immediate priorities and immediate needs that should be taken care of tomorrow, but what is it five years from now? What do we want our parks to look like? What do we want the, the, the benefit to the community? What is our vision for our park system here in the village five years from now? Not just tomorrow, not just the, the shiny new play structures that we are so excited to get, but five years from now, what are we gonna need? Uh, yeah. Good, good. Mr. Lamb. Haven't I said enough? <laughs> you have. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Miss Lassinger. Is that really, are you done? Yeah, is that, that's your only comment? I tried to talk a little bit for you to give you a break. Oh, yeah, I did. Jeez. Okay. Um, so with a very heavy heart, I got to say that this is going to be my last village council meeting um, until the birth of my child. Uh, COVID numbers are horrendous. Um, I could get into all of the stats. I won't. Um, you guys can go look on the CDC website yourself. Um, but I am concerned if I'm positive, the logistical hell that that would be for a hospital birth. And if my husband's positive, I don't know if he'd be allowed in the birth. Um, so uh, think of it as me taking my maternity leave early. Um, and hopefully the numbers go down. The reason why I have to do this is because the laws in Lansing, well, Lansing um, allow uh, elected officials to participate virtually up until December 31st, 2021. Um, and then that uh, did not, was not extended. Um, they, were allowed to, they were allowed to attend virtually for the normal reasons, which was deployment. If you were deployed, you were allowed to call in. But they also added, for COVID reasons, um, medical conditions, medical health conditions. And that has, is no longer available. And I, I, can't, I can't risk getting COVID right now. Um, I can't risk my husband getting COVID. Uh, we're, we're so close to getting this baby out of me. I, I, can't, I can't do that. So we got to look at the best interests of the kid. And um, I understand that some people might not agree with me, uh, but it was not an easy decision to make. Um, so I just hope that you can, even if you don't agree with it, that you respect it. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Uh, the only comment I have is uh, uh, kind of a delightful comment, if you will. 
is that this Thursday will be the first warming hub downtown. It'll go through this month and February right now. So an opportunity, because those actually are kind of cool. I attended a few and hosted a couple last year for people to meet and greet, get out there and talk to their neighbors that they haven't seen. You're not in their house, you're not, you're distancing. Um, it's a good time had by all. The DDA is looking for people to host, not people essentially, but groups, to host some of those warming evenings, such as it could be a church organization, it could be a scout troop, it could be a number of things where they just provide a couple of people, two, three, four people, and they uh, take the responsibility of uh, being an adult on site and, and, and uh, watching what's going on and, and uh, keep everybody warm. And as I, if I remember, the, the DDA provided the wood, the marshmallows, oh, yeah. the, everything was there. It was, it was yeah. actually fun. It was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah we went to a couple. Yeah, Mr. Hopkins. Yeah. You're going to have fires? Yeah. I'm so, the reason to death right here. <laughs> <laughs> the two sites are going to be at Anderson and Flint and then down by the American Legion parking lot again, same as last year. In February, there will be an ice carving festival. Uh, bigger, better than last year. A lot of people came out for that. A lot of people enjoyed it. So that's it. Just good news. And Mr. Young. I just wanted to note that next Thursday it's supposed to be 28 high and low of 16 as opposed to the zero tonight. Uh, and we'll be there. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that Monday, next Monday, is the Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday and the village offices are closed. Uh, so Thank I just you, wanted sir. to. Make sure we're aware of that. And we'll be getting the budget uh, calendar out and starting to schedule some um, preliminary budget meetings, if that's the council would like to do, which we prefer to know what your interests are. And then we come back with the budget uh, with some options for you to consider, including capital improvement and some staffing uh, proposals that will be for your consideration. Yes, please get that calendar out because we'll, it kind of gets everybody off of uh, the base to start thinking about, they've got to have some ideas and discussion items for February 20th, whatever the first date may be. Yeah. And we do have a lot of infrastructure items. Mr. Young and I have created a, a list of about 40 things here in our community that need to have some, some uh, an, an eye put on, and uh, you're certainly welcome to contact him if you'd like to get some of that data. Is that it, sir? Yes, yes, thank you. Entertain a motion to Adjourn. So move. Second. All those favor, please indicate aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you very much. Meeting's adjourned. Good night.